Hello, uh, this is the June 30th, 2017 weather briefing. I'm uh, going to go over some uh, surface charts uh, and also upper air analysis and a few other uh, graphics as needed. Um, we'll start at the national level and we'll work our way down to the local uh, levels. First up is the surface chart. Um, so we have a high pressure off to the east coast right there. Uh, moving inward, or landward, I guess, moving to the west, we have a low pressure system over Wisconsin and towards Minnesota that is causing some disturbance along the stationary front. Um, there's some storms along the stationary front and also in the small trough that is just ahead of the low pressure system causing some storms in Indianapolis and Ohio. Uh, the last thing on this page would be the uh, stationary front uh, to the south of that high pressure. Uh, there are some storms being um, stirred up in the northern parts of Florida. Next we have the upper air uh, analysis for June 30th. Um, this is the 300 millibars on the left and 500 millibars on the right. Um, we have a jet streak uh, maxing, maxing out at about 90 knots. Uh, it's not a very strong jet stream, but uh, it, they, you know, we do have a jet streak, as well as two minor jet streaks in the 500 millibar charts. We have around 60 uh, in that first circle to the left over uh, Nebraska. And over Michigan, we have winds up about 60 knots. Uh, looking at satellite, uh, infrared is on the right and visible is on the left. It, it's a extremely cloudy day across the North American, uh, North America. There, that's what I meant to say. Um, as seen by all these stratiform clouds, um, you'll notice as we highlight the storms that I mentioned. Uh, the color on the infrared gets brighter. That means that the cloud tops are getting higher, therefore making the tops colder. It doesn't necessarily mean the storms are stronger per se, it just means that the, um, the cloud tops are taller. Uh, water vapor, uh, we have two dry slots. Uh, these are dry conveyor belts um, intruding into the uh, moist air. Uh, those are our three storms in uh, mini, or Minnesota going down to um, Nebraska, uh, Ohio, Indianapolis, and the storms in Florida. Uh, again, you can see that water vapor is showing up higher. Again, Now, water vapor does not necessarily show um, storms. It just shows where there is higher amounts of water vapor. Um, we're going to take a look at the uh, radar. Uh, as I said, there's that line in Minnesota extending towards Nebraska. We have the storms over Ohio and Indianapolis and also the storms down in Florida. We're going to zoom in here at the Indianapolis uh, radar. Uh, there is a severe thunderstorm warning issued uh, for high winds and for possibility of uh, about an inch in ha uh, diameter hail. Um, other than that, it looks mainly like a wind swath. It doesn't look like it uh, is all that strong. Going down to Jacksonville, uh, we do have that higher reflectivity, um, but we do not see any warnings. Um, so we're just getting uh, heavy rain down in uh, the coast of Florida. Uh, up next is the uh, aircraft reports or pilot reports. Uh, it's pretty calm throughout the nation with some um, reports coming in, negligible turbulence, moderate turbulence, light trace or uh, moderate icing towards the uh, southeastern coast. And we have one urgent request that came out in uh, Massachusetts, if I believe that's right, unless it's Pennsylvania, um, right there. And that was for a low-level wind uh, uh moderate to severe turbulence. Uh, next is our SIGMETs for the day. Uh, this was issued at 2236. Um, we have quite a lot of convective um, SIGMETs that are out. 
Uh, again, that's due to mostly the storms that are associated with that high or the low pressure that's over Wisconsin. Uh, also, the um, that trough that's extending in off of the Pacific um, is causing some convective segments in the southeastern coast. Woe is right. Uh, low level uh, significant weather we're looking at pretty much consistent with uh, where those storms are they are in, uh, in or, uh, IFR conditions um, we also have an area outside of that that is uh, MVFR to uh, VFR uh, moderate turbulence at 8,000 inside the storms or just south of the storms of uh, Indianapolis and we also have a moderate at 8,000 over uh, the Texas Panhandle. Uh, looking 24 hours ahead, uh, it seems to be a lot more calm. Uh, and a lot of the weather has pushed off to the northeast. Uh, finally, the high level uh, significant weather. Uh, you can see those jet streams. Um, this map was showing 120 to 110, or 110 to 120. Um, which isn't what we saw earlier, but this map was made uh, a few hours later, considering I had to make some edits to the um, briefing. Uh, there is also some isolated and uh, occasional uh, embedded CBs. Uh, the CBs indicate anything from icing, turbulence, and uh, so thunderstorms. These ones up in the uh, North America area, North American area, that's what I meant to say, are um, due to the uh, thunderstorms. Uh, lastly, I know I said finally, lastly the freezing levels. Um, they're pretty high up in the 15,000 to 17,000 feet MSL, um, as well as over our neck of the woods we have uh, 9,000 to 11,000 freezing levels. Uh, looking ahead at the convective and wind outlook for day one, we have the area of um, enhanced and 30% chance of damaging winds over Oklahoma and Texas. And then we have an area over Ohio with those storms that are being produced at this time. Uh, this is the local Grand Forks area forecast discussion. Uh, if you want, you can pause the video and read the full discussion. Uh, but just to give you a synopsis, they have mentioned the uh, shower and weak thunderstorm development for far eastern forecast area. Um, throughout the evening, the cumulus should diminish and winds should be light. Um, the short range models are consistent with depicting an area of showers dropping into the northwest towards Saturday morning. And these are associated with the um, upper level speed max and short wave. Uh, for the long term, on Sunday, a northless flow aloft as the upper ridge amplifies over the high plains and begins to shift east into the Dakotas. A uh, few showers will be triggered with, uh, with that um, flow and the upper ridge amplifying. For our aviation forecast uh, issued at 12.35 uh, p.m. Central Daylight Time, uh, there's an MVFR cloud deck over the central Red River Valley and the ceilings should rise into the lower end of VFR by mid-afternoon. Uh, TAFs for the area, uh, mostly VFR. There are some uh, storms and rain occurring in Minnesota, um, but for North Dakota, it is mainly MVFR or VFR with winds out of the northwest. And that's seen here on surface charts as well. Um, cloud cover is extensive from Grand Forks uh, southeastward uh, to about, um, I want to say that's St. Cloud. I can't read from here because if I get too close and speak, the mic volume spikes up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the clouds are going from Grand Forks down southeastward towards about St. Cloud. Uh, temperatures are in the ranges of 60s to low 70s in Minnesota. Uh, one last thing to mention would be the cold front that is pushing through. You can see that as indicated by the blue line. 
that cold front is uh, bringing some cooler air behind it. Not necessarily cold air, just uh, unseasonably cool air. And finally, our radar um, for Minneapolis. There's a few uh, scattered showers, possibly an isolated thunderstorm. Uh, but for our area here in Grand Forks, nice clear day. Get out and enjoy it.